What's up everyone, Tony here, and this is the third of three videos detailing the three new roles added to Red Dead Online in the Frontier Pursuits content update. Today we'll be taking a closer look at the Bounty Hunter role. We'll look at how exactly it works, the positives and negatives of this role compared to the other two roles, which items you should buy and which items you should ignore, and of course a couple of tips for hitting rank 20 as quickly and easily as possible. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Starting the Bounty Hunter role requires you to approach this bounty board here in Rhodes and pay the standard fee of 15 gold bars. From there you could then approach any one of the 13 bounty boards found all across the game's map and start tackling bounties. The Bounty Hunter role is pretty straightforward compared to the others, but here's a quick rundown for those of you just getting started. Each of the 13 bounty boards have two selectable regular bounties and the one legendary bounty that will change each week. The boards refresh every hour or so, with completed bounties being replaced with new ones. And when I say new ones, I mean the same ones you've already captured before. Let's just assume they keep breaking out of jail. In the end, with 13 bounty boards, there's no shortage of bounty hunter missions that you could tackle during any given play session, no matter where on the map you are located. Each of the bounties on a given board have their various differences. The first bounty usually has only one dollar sign on the poster, which means it offers the lowest payout of cash, gold, and XP, but it's also the easiest and most straightforward. For these simple bounties, you can usually just ride directly to the location of the bounty, which is provided on your minimap, and then proceed to quickly capture the target and bring them in. Nice and easy. The second bounty will have two dollar signs on the poster, and sometimes can involve capturing multiple targets in one shot. The more dollar signs on the poster, the higher the payout will be, and of course if there's more than one target, the payout will be even higher still. However, as you'd expect, these more difficult bounties are less straightforward and more time consuming. Expect more enemies waiting for you near the target, or in the case of multiple targets, there's a greater chance that one of them gets away, which means less of a payout for you. Also, most of the time for these higher difficulty bounties, you'll be required to find clues and follow a trail, much like how hunting legendary animals works in the single player mode. Eventually, you'll find enough clues to track down the hidden location of the bounty, at which point you can bring them in. If you complete or fail one of the legendary bounties, the legendary poster will no longer be selectable for about an hour or so. Instead, it'll be replaced with a $3 sign bounty, which of course results in an even higher payout than the $2 sign bounties, but are also the most difficult of all. If you want to play one of these instead of a legendary bounty, you can simply start a legendary and then intentionally fail the mission or blow yourself up, and that will allow the $3 sign bounty posters to appear on the board. While these multiple dollar sign bounties definitely take longer than single dollar sign bounties, most of the time the greater payout is worth the additional time investment. Ultimately, they're still pretty easy and won't take that much longer than a single dollar sign bounty. So if you only have time in the day to complete one bounty, I'd recommend doing one of these. Finally, we have those legendary bounties which are meticulously crafted and are super hard compared to the standard bounties. We'll learn all about the legendaries in just a minute when we start diving into the tips for the bounty hunter role. As for the actual structure of each bounty hunter mission, they're really no different from many of the stranger missions we've already seen in Red Dead Online, as well as some of the story missions in the single player mode of Red Dead Redemption 2. Basically, you're given a place to go on the map, explore the area, maybe shoot a bunch of bad guys, then lasso and hogtie the bounty itself, which is indicated by a red skull on the map. You now need to deliver the person to the nearest jail or wagon on the map, at which point you'll be paid for your efforts. You can also kill the bounty and deliver its corpse, but the payout is worse, and for the purposes of this video, we're always going to assume you're delivering the bounties alive. After all, we're trying to hit max rank as quickly as possible, and you get more roll XP for bringing in bounties alive. Seriously, it's not that hard to bring them in alive, and the only times I've killed a bounty is when they catch a stray bullet from one of the computer controlled enemies. As you're delivering the bounty on horseback, more bad guys will chase you down and try to kill you, but they are easily picked off. 
And really, that's the basics of the Bounty Hunter role. Like I said before, these bounty missions overall are pretty simple and straightforward, and the role itself is not that complicated. Nonetheless, I'd still recommend buying some tonics and powerful ammo before really digging into the role, just for that extra security when dealing with waves of enemies. Now, having reached max rank for all three roles, I have to say the Bounty Hunter functions very differently from the other two roles. Unlike the Trader and Collector, there is no point with the Bounty Hunter where you can make tons of cash and XP all in one shot. While I was able to max out the Trader and Collector roles in about a week's time, the Bounty Hunter took me well over a month of regular play. The fact of the matter is this. The payouts for the Bounty Hunter role are super low compared to the other two roles. There's nothing even close to the large wagon long distance delivery or finding and selling an entire set of collectibles. Those are cases where your XP and cash payouts just explode through the roof. This role was definitely built to last, and I have to say, I'm kind of thankful for that because it's kept me coming back to the game and giving me something to do every day after crushing those other two roles super quickly. But yeah, if tons of cash and XP is your main goal, you won't be finding much of each here with the Bounty Hunter role, at least compared to the Trader and Collector. However, there is one major advantage the Bounty Hunter role has over the Trader and Collector, and it's the fact that you are paid in gold for every bounty you deliver. You aren't getting any gold as a Trader or Collector, so while the XP and cash payouts may seem small in comparison to those two roles, keep in mind you're making gold here with the Bounty Hunter as well, and with all the bounties you're going to deliver en route to reaching rank 20, that gold definitely adds up. Between Bounty Hunter, Treasure Maps, and completing daily challenges, coming across gold in Red Dead Online certainly isn't as difficult as it once was, which is really nice. But before we really dig into the Bounty Hunter role specifically, I would personally recommend unlocking all three roles as quickly as possible. I think Bounty Hunting is the role I got burnt out on the fastest, and that's simply because you have to complete so many of them before ranking up. And that could definitely get repetitive. I found that breaking up the bounty hunting with setting out to find some collectibles adds a lot to the overall Red Dead Online experience. And it provides you with loads of cash, which is something the bounty hunter role really does not. I've also found that bounty hunting is a great way to pass time while waiting for crypts to break down materials for my trader business. Ultimately, having all three roles going on at once provides the optimal gameplay loop at the moment and is Red Dead Online at its very best. If you need help with the trader or collector role, I already have those guide videos up here on the channel, so definitely check them out if you haven't already. Take advantage of those perfect collector route videos and never worry about money in Red Dead Online again. Okay, with that out of the way, let's turn our focus specifically to the bounty hunter role. Okay, so this tip doesn't actually specifically help you rank up your bounty hunter role, but considering just how many dudes you're gonna kill while ranking up through this role, it comes in handy here the most, so I figured I'd quickly mention it. I highly recommend turning off auto-aim before heading into these enemy-filled bounty hunter missions. By doing this, every time you kill an enemy, you'll get a plus 20 XP free aim bonus on top of the 5 XP that you always get from any kill. That extra 20 XP adds up extremely quickly since there are so many enemies you'll be taking down, and as a result, you'll be ranking up super fast. To make things even sweeter, kill enemies by firing from the hip and using special ammo for even more XP bonuses for every kill. That's a grand total of 40 XP per kill, which is ridiculous. Now, if you have no experience playing with auto aim off, make sure you pack a couple of health tonics just in case you can't handle the heavy fire. But honestly, these enemies shouldn't be super hard to deal with, and with all the new tweaks to the game's controls from the Frontier Pursuits update, the quicker shooting and on foot movement just makes combat overall a lot easier than it was before. But look, if it gets too crazy, especially in some of those higher difficulty bounty hunter missions, don't waste your time trying to be a tough guy and just turn auto aim back on. It's fine. We're all friends here. Anyways, now let's get into the first actual tip for ranking up quickly through the bounty hunter role. 
This is an important tip for all three roles, but I think it's most important for the bounty hunter in particular. Since the average XP payout for these missions is so low, you're gonna need all the help you can get. Completing daily challenges will provide you with some solid, extra roll XP without much additional hassle. At first, you'll only have one daily roll challenge to complete, with the second unlocked at rank 5 and a third at rank 10. The daily roll challenges for bounty hunters are very simple, and usually just ask you to complete bounties from a board located in a certain area of the map. There's really no reason not to follow these guidelines, and the extra XP you get from daily challenges is honestly some of the best you're going to find from this bounty hunter role. So if you only have 30 minutes a day to play Red Dead Online, spend it on completing a daily challenge. As was the case in GTA Online, you'll receive a slightly higher payout if you take longer to complete a mission here in Red Dead Online. I always thought this was a really dumb mechanic, if anything you should get rewarded for doing this stuff quickly rather than slowly, but it is what it is so you might as well take advantage. There doesn't seem to be any exact science to this trick, and the payout may fluctuate for you compared to what is seen here in this video, but the old tried and true rule was to wait until the timer reached less than 30 seconds, and then complete the mission for the highest payout. So just come close to the yellow area on the map, and then, I guess, refresh Twitter for five minutes or something? Throw on a podcast. Browse dank memes. For my quick tests, I found that delivering a single dollar sign bounty as quickly as possible yielded a standard payout of 150 bounty hunter XP, .08 gold, and $6.00 while waiting for the timer to hit less than 30 seconds, resulted in 431 roll XP, 0.32 gold, and $17.25. Again, this payout probably won't be exactly what you see in your game, but generally speaking, waiting for that timer to come down a bit will increase the payout in the end. It's not a ton of difference, especially given how much time you're wasting just standing around, but it does add up, and like I mentioned before, with the Bounty Hunter roll, we need all the roll XP we can get. Every roll offers special items that'll help you reach that max rank quicker, and the Bounty Hunter is no exception. Luckily, the most important item is available right from the beginning, and it's the Reinforced Lasso. The Reinforced Lasso is a must-buy. It costs $350, but it's super worth it, and will quickly become any bounty hunter's best friend. With the regular lasso, there's a chance that your bounty could break free when you stow them to your horse. This could be an annoying time waster at best, or at worst, the target could actually escape and you'll fail the mission. With the reinforced lasso, that is no longer a problem and just makes the entire bounty hunter roll a lot easier. Now, believe it or not, having reached max rank, the Reinforced Lasso is the only item I feel is truly critical to purchase if you want to reach max Bounty Hunter rank yourself. Quickly though, let's take a look at two other key items that I'd recommend not wasting your money on. First up is the Bolus, which is unlocked at rank 10. This is just my experience, but at $30 a piece, they always felt like a ripoff to me. First off, it only really comes in handy if you're tackling a bounty that involves multiple targets, and most of the time, you won't be. The Reinforced Lasso works perfectly fine for any single target. The only real advantage bolus provide over the Reinforced Lasso is the fact that your target is immediately put into a tangled state when it connects, and you aren't tethered to your target like you would be with a lasso. This means you don't have to get off your horse and then slowly walk towards the target to hogtie them. In missions with multiple targets, it's during this time that the other targets could shoot and kill you, so in this very specific use case, the bolus could be useful. However, from my experience, most of the time those targets just bolt in the opposite direction, and at that point there's little you could do to prevent them from escaping. I've also run into plenty of scenarios where you're chasing a target on horseback. If you throw and miss with a lasso, that's fine, you can just keep moving and try again. If you miss with the bolus, you're pretty much screwed. Either you just threw away $30, or you could get off your horse and try to pick it back up, but by the time you're able to chase the target again, 
they will most likely have escaped and you'll have failed the mission. Long story short, I'd avoid wasting time with the bolus and generally avoid the bounties with multiple targets. In theory, you could have perfect quick sniper execution and totally crush these multiple target bounties. If you think you're up for that, then give it a try. However, from my experience, they're just a headache and I was able to get through the role perfectly fine by focusing mainly on single, high difficulty targets and capturing them with my trusty reinforced lasso. Finally, let's talk about the Bounty Wagon, which is also unlocked at rank 10 and costs a crazy $875. In my mind, it's the biggest ripoff of all. Do not buy the Bounty Wagon unless you're bored with your money. I bought the thing because I thought it would make bounties that involved multiple targets easier. Instead, just spawning the thing is a pain in the ass. First, you have to target your primary horse and make it flee. Then you stumble through these menus to summon the bounty wagon. When it finally pops up, it's super slow. And maybe worst of all, you can't summon it by whistling. You can't summon your primary horse by whistling either. Basically, your whistle button becomes useless when you're using the bounty wagon. You basically need to capture a bounty on foot, then store it in the bounty wagon, and then still deliver the bounty to the nearest jail. If the bounty rides away on horseback, you could pretty much kiss it goodbye. You lose so much functionality and mobility by using the wagon as opposed to your standard horse, and that results in more targets getting away and more missions being failed. Ultimately, you are far better off spending that money on the fastest horse possible, or upgrading your current horse. If you're hunting multiple targets, you can simply lasso and hogtie them, and then deliver them one at a time. They can't break out of the reinforced lasso, so whether they're just struggling around on the ground, or locked in the back of the bounty wagon really makes no difference. With a really fast horse, the back and forth delivery process will probably end up being faster than if you stored two or three targets in the back of the bounty wagon and delivered them all at once. It's a no brainer for me kids, buy that reinforced lasso, focus on single target bounties, and ignore the bolus and bounty wagon. The legendary bounties are so damn cool. Rockstar has been releasing a new one each week since the update went live, and each of them basically come off like a main story mission. Each one starts with a cool cutscene exploring the backstory of each bounty, cutscenes are fully voice acted and shot like proper main story cutscenes, and then the scenario itself is meticulously designed and again feel as deep and intricate as a main story mission. When it comes to new things being added since Frontier Pursuits went live, the bounty hunter role has definitely been receiving the most love compared to the other two roles. In the end, you're probably going to end up in a massive shootout with a ton of enemies, and compared to the standard bounty hunter missions, these legendary bounties are pretty damn hard. The enemies take more hits than your standard enemies, and you only have a couple of lives for each attempt. These scenarios are all unique, and some of the latest ones released around Halloween have been especially trippy and weird, but generally they're going to test your shooting skills like no other mission in Red Dead Online. You definitely can't just go balls out and expect to get away with it like some of the other activities in this mode. I highly recommend taking these missions slow, sneaking your way towards the target, and packing some health tonics and special ammo no matter what your skill level is. While the difficulty level may be high, completing legendary bounties is essential if you want to reach max bounty hunter rank quickly. It provides a huge XP payout, way more than any standard bounty or daily challenge, and like the standard bounties, that payout will increase if you take longer to actually complete the mission. However, after completing one of them, you'll only be able to try it again at an even higher difficulty as expressed by the amount of stars on the bounty poster. After each successful legendary bounty completed, another star is added to the poster, and the difficulty level goes up all the way to the max difficulty of 5 stars. If you're playing solo, it's possible to complete these 5 star legendary bounties, but good luck. The enemies become bullet sponges, and you die really, really quick. It is the ultimate test of skill. At the very least, I strongly recommend completing the 1 star legendary bounty each week, 
which is the initial difficulty. They're a lot of fun, each feels very unique and distinct from the last, and of course, they provide that great payout. And that's gonna wrap it up for the Bounty Hunter role. All in all, the Bounty Hunter is clearly the most straightforward of the three new roles, but it's also the most time consuming if you're looking to reach maximum rank. However, if you complete those daily challenges, let the timer run for a bit, and deliver enough legendary bounties through smart use of your trusty reinforced lasso, you should probably hit rank 20 at least a lot faster than I did. As a bonus, you'll end up with a bunch of gold and complete mastery of free aim shooting for all your troubles. With that, I now have guide videos for all three of the new roles added to Red Dead Online in the Frontier Pursuits content update. If you're looking to become a master trader or collector, check out those guide videos down below in the video description. If you like this video and want to see more Red Dead Online and Red Dead Redemption 2 content, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I am just about finished with my commentated first person HUDless Red Dead Redemption 2 walkthrough with just a handful of missions from the game's epilogue to go. I should have that video series wrapped up in time for the big day, November 5th which is when the PC port of Red Dead Redemption 2 drops. Expect full coverage of that banger in addition to mods. Many, many mods. But that's all for today, so until next time, thanks so much for watching everyone, and take care.